welcome to our sixth program of this Food Sensation series. I'm Rachel and this is Vanessa and today we're going to be talking about party foods on a budget. We'll be looking at kids parties, so what's served at kids parties and is commonly found in loot bags and also some healthier alternatives for kids parties. We'll also be looking at uh, adult parties as well and just things to consider when serving food at these parties. And then finally today we're going to be cooking two easy, low-cost, healthy dips, a beetroot dip and a guacamole. But before we start, we're just going to quickly tell you a little bit about Food Bank WA. Okay, so Food Bank WA is a not-for-profit agency which has been operating since 1994. We have branches in Perth, Mandra, Bunbury, Albany, Kalgoorlie, Boulder and also Geraldton. We are a link between the food industry and people in need of food relief. As well as the food relief side of things, Food Bank has a number of health promotion initiatives and one of those is Food Sensations. So Food Sensations is an interactive nutrition and cooking workshops. It is available in primary and secondary schools as well as in adult and community based organisations. So we offer many sessions to parent groups, new migrants, indigenous people and others in need of learning about good nutrition. Kids parties are a great time to celebrate and a time to have a few treat foods, but just remember that it all adds up. Brene Barber, a ECU new Masters in Nutrition and Dietetics student, in conjunction with the Cancer Council, recently looked into kids party foods and loot bags. So based on her studies, she found that at the average kids party, a kid might be having one party pie, three chicken nuggets, a serve of crisps, a slice of birthday cake or a cupcake, and a party loot bag that has 75% confectionery. If you add all this up, it actually equates to about seven teaspoons of fat and 28 teaspoons of sugar. So if you add a can of soft drink onto that as well, and if your child goes to just one birthday party a month, this can actually equate to about two kilos of added sugar that your child's going to be eating every year. And this is two kilos of sugar, if you can see it in the bowl. So as you can see, this is just lots of extra sugar and, Ooh, and calories that your children doesn't really need to be having in their diet. So after showing you all that sugar that can be consumed in a year for a child going to a party once a month, we just thought we'd show you a few popular drinks that may be served at parties. Um, so you can, I guess it's just about reminding yourself how much sugar is in all these drinks and then trying to provide, I guess, a healthier option for the kids. So if we just start here on the end, so if you look at um, a typical 600 ml bottle of soft drink, one of these has about 13 teaspoons of sugar. So that's 13 teaspoons there. Often at parties you might see people serving up fruit drink. So the difference between fruit drink and 100% orange juice is that often fruit drink is just diluted fruit juice but then they actually add extra sugar to it as well. So a typical orange uh, fruit drink, so this is 600 mils, actually has the same amount of sugar as your soft drink over here. So it's got 13 teaspoons of sugar as well. So that's a 25% orange juice. So really not much orange juice, more sugar than orange juice. Do you want to carry on? Yes, I will. So um, we have a little kids pop top sort of bottle that you get at um, the supermarket delis and also comes with some fast food meals. So this has six teaspoons of sugar. So six teaspoons in 250 mils is quite a lot of sugar. So if you sort of look at it in terms of the amounts of sugar, it's actually got a very similar amount to these. It's just because it's in a smaller serving that you actually get the less teaspoons. Yeah. And then if we move on to a can of soft drink, so any can of soft drink has between 8 to 10 teaspoons depending on the variety that you buy. So that's for a 375 ml. And then we've got a carton of chalk milk or iced coffee, any of those, which is a 600 ml. Uh, that has 11 teaspoons of sugar. So I guess knowing now how much sugar is in each of these, it's about limiting the amount of uh, unhealthy sort of drinks that you offer at parties. So Rachel's just going to go through some other healthy options. So I guess the easiest, healthiest and of course cheapest option at a party is water. It's free, straight from the tap. Um, and you can do things to it to make it a bit more exciting for the kids if you like. Um, some people actually put a little bit of natural food colouring in there just to make it a bit more exciting. So that's an option. 
Um, another good option, as I mentioned before, is if you're going to serve up a fruit drink, try and have it as a fruit juice, not as a fruit drink, because like I said, the fruit drink often has lots of added sugar. But it is really important, especially for younger children under the age of five, that if you can, even if it's 100% fruit juice, just dilute it down quite a lot. If you can dilute it down to sort of one part juice to four parts water, it's just a really good idea. I mean, it's a lot better for the kids' teeth and it just sort of um, stops them from getting used to having that really strong, sweet fruit juice that even 100% fruit juice is. Another option is something like a fruit punch. So you might want to sort of mix up something like fruit juice with some sugar-free lemonade and some pieces of actual fresh fruit or canned fruit in there just to make it a bit more exciting as well. So that's another good healthy drink alternative. And it's also good just to ha try and have a range of sugar-free soft drinks available for any children as well. So whether this is something like a diet lemonade or a low jewel or diet cordial, um, it's just gonna help keep those sugar levels down for their um, drink intake while they're at parties. So as we discussed earlier, Renee Barber, who was the dietetic student at the Cancer Council, had surveyed about 45 parents in the metro area with children aged 2 to 11. And parents suggested that most of the time that kids go to parties, they are all given a loot or a party bag to take home. And when asked about what sort of foods were actually in those party bags, it was just things like jelly lollies, chocolate, lollipops, wrapped lollies, and sometimes some non-food items as well. So loot bags are a great idea for kids and kids do expect them sometimes at the end of parties but it's often good to try a mixture of some, you know, the usual sweet treats but also some other healthier options and also putting in some more non-food items like little pencils, pens, notebooks, stamps, things like that that kids love too. So I'm just going to show you on the pyramid, so most of the time the loot bags do contain foods that are from the eat least part of the pyramid. It's not really often that you're going to get a party loot bag with eat most foods, but that's what we're trying to do is I suppose give kids a few treats, but also including some healthier options also. So whether that's putting in more of uh, the non-food treats and more stamps and pens and pencils and things like that that kids will love to use, but not necessarily going to give them the sugar that they don't really need. So Vanessa's already mentioned some ideas that you can have for loot bags just to make them a bit healthier. So some other food ideas you might want to pop in your loot bag are things like a trail mix. So you can make up your own mix of nuts, dried fruit and plain popcorn. You might want to pop in a little bag of just some lightly flavoured popcorn or even something like dried fruit in your loot bag instead of all those lollies and things. As Vanessa said, there's lots of non-food items that you can pop into a loot bag as well. So as well as what she's already mentioned, things like little activity books or story books. If you don't mind a noisy party, you might be brave and pop in some whistles or party poppers. Uh, some kids will love a little bit of plastic jewellery that they can take home with them. Uh, balloons might be another idea. And I don't know, but most kids I know, big and small, love bubbles. So a little bubble blowing wand and some liquid might be another good idea to pop in there as well. Thanks Rachel for that. So now we're going to just talk about party foods and the types of foods that you can provide at kids parties. So there is the foods that you can buy from the supermarket but they are quite expensive. So we're just going to give you some ideas of things that you can make at home. One idea is to use raisin bread and just cut it into shapes using cookie cutters. Uh, another option is to freeze like some bananas. You can put in pop sticks and they're quite good for little icy poles. Kids love frozen fruit, so any sort of frozen fruit, you can freeze grapes, uh, berries and things like that. They're good little treats as well. Fruit pikelets are a good idea also for parties. They can be made pretty quickly and cheaply at home. So apple and cinnamon fruit pikelets, any sort of fruit can be added to a pikelet mixture to make some healthy uh, options for kids. So kids also like anything that's on a stick, so fruit kebabs with a variety of fruit or even some meat kebabs if you're having a barbecue. So they're actually a good option as well. And just talking about birthday cakes, so it's actually a lot cheaper to make your own birthday cakes at home. So if you're gonna buy one at the shop, for instance, like a banana cake from a special cake shop, they're about $25 each, but you can actually make one at home for around $7. So you can also make homemade junk foods, the things like chicken nuggets, pizza, potato wedges or fries as well. So there are other options that you can make at home which are a lot cheaper and healthier than the ones that you buy at the store. 
So what we're going to do now is just show you how much healthier a homemade version of some of these foods can be. So if we just have a look here, a takeaway pizza might have up to 11 teaspoons of fat um, in a serve of pizza compared to a homemade version which might only have one teaspoon of fat. So if you do a nice homemade pizza, maybe on a pit of bread or something like that, heaps of veggies, heaps of lean meats, you can see you can drop that fat content down quite a lot compared to getting a takeaway pizza. So also not look, only just looking at the fats, also the cost as well. It's a lot cheaper to actually make your pizza at home compared to if you had a, uh, one bought from a store. So the next one we're going to quickly have a look at is chicken nuggets. You can basically um, cut the fat down quite a lot by making your own ones at home. So store-bought uh, chicken nuggets might have up to three teaspoons of fat in them compared to a homemade version, which might just have half a spoon of fat in it. So that's basically just uh, getting some nice lean chicken, making your own flavoured crumbing and things, and just oven baking it. You can cut down a lot of that fat. And then last of all, we're just going to have a look at some hot chips. So by doing your own homemade hot chips, you can basically halve the amount of fat that your kids might be having. So typically you might be having four spoons of fat with some takeaway ones compared to only two if you do your own ones at home. Again, you could probably even cut this down a little bit more. So it's about just having some fresh potatoes, chopping them up, giving them a really light spray of some oil and then popping them in the oven. And, and like Vanessa said, the cost difference can be quite a lot as well. If you compare potatoes, which are only about $2 a kilo, compared to um, buying them pre-made or from the hot chip shop, then you can save a lot of money there as well. So we're just going to show you some options just looking at the pyramid. Um, foods that we were talking about earlier and where they actually fit on the pyramid compared to the foods that you might get in your loot bag. So. For instance, we're talking about the kebab, so the meat on a stick for kids, so definitely that comes in the eat some section. And then also looking at we, how we've shown you in an earlier episode of the yogurt crumble cup, so that's a really good option for kids as well, so just with the yogurt, the muesli and the fruit. Well that would sort of go half and half because it's a bit of both. So um, having a fruit platter with lots of watermelon and grapes and things like that is another option. Whoops. And star fruit, which is an interesting type of fruit for kids. And also just some cheese and some crackers as well. Kids often just like to have something simple, so you can have some cheese on the crackers or some avocado spread with some other veggies. That's another good option. And just looking at the juice, so looking at the 100% juice as well. So as Rachel said about diluting that fruit juice to make it a bit uh, weaker and not so strong. Thanks, Vanessa. So as well as kids' party foods, we're also going to be talking about foods for grown-up parties. So as we talked about in one of our previous episodes, there's easy swaps you can make to make your food healthier. So things you can think about when doing food for these sorts of parties is if you're making any dips for your party, you might want to make ones that are based on low-fat yogurts or a vegetable-based dip as opposed to ones that have got lots of cream or sour cream in them. Other things you might want to try is instead of having lots of pastries at your party, you might want to use either a reduced fat pastry or you might actually decide to use bread cases instead of pastries for pies. Another suggestion is that if you're making like a platter or something, you might want to just do a mixture of lower fat and higher fat cold meats. So things like salami or pepperoni, those sorts of things are obviously really high in fat you can actually see the little white bits of fat in them. So if you do a mixture of those with maybe some leaner meats, such as ham or a roast beef, something like that, it can be a bit better. And it's also good to have a combination of higher and lower fat cheeses as well. So you might want to use maybe a combination of your nice creamy cheeses like brie and camembert, but mix it up with a reduced fat hard cheese like a cheddar cheese or something like that. So some other swaps to consider are using wholemeal bread and grain bread as much as possible. This just makes it a bit healthier and more fibre in the food that you're going to serve. Another option is to have vegetable sticks or rice crackers or homemade pita chips um, instead of potato or corn chips. So this just makes it a whole lot healthier as well than just serving uh, corn chips with your dip. Rachel's also going to be able to tell you how to put some of the swaps into action. So one of the party favourites is often sausage rolls. 
So what you can do with sausage rolls to make them a bit healthier is first of all you can use a reduced fat puff pastry around the outside and then it's just looking at your filling. So maybe using a reduced fat mince instead of sausage mince and then you can actually add some vegetables and flavour it up with some different herbs and spices just so they're still really nice and tasty. As I mentioned before you can actually use bread cases instead of pastry for pies as well. So using, making your own little mini quiches can be really great using bread cases instead of pastry. And then another thing that's a really healthy, easy party food for adults is something like a bruschetta. So you could have some nice fresh tomatoes, sprinkle some fresh herbs, maybe a little drizzle of olive oil on some nice toasted bread. But you can of course use heaps of different fillings for this. So like Vanessa mentioned before, things like avocado and stuff can be great on these sorts of things as well. So we've just got some other things that we're going to just pop on the pyramid now, just as party ideas as well for adults. So as I mentioned before, uh, your meats like salamis and pepperonis and things, these are actually an eat least food, so they pop up the top here as well. But in terms of healthier foods that you might serve up at, at parties as well, some nice uh, fresh tropical fruit might be a good thing that adults might like. Um, as Vanessa said, having things like vegetable sticks instead of potato chips and things. So we've got some celery here that you might want to cut into sticks. Um, got some whole grain crackers as well that you might have as an alternative to potato chips or corn chips. And then other nice little um, sort of nibbles that you might pop out are things like olives. And also some different nuts and things. So whether, we've got pistachios here, but you could put out peanuts, cashew nuts, anything like that. It is good though just to try and get the dry roasted ones and ones that also don't have too much salt on them. So that's just some more ideas that um, you might want to serve up at grown up parties. Parties are a good time to celebrate but just remember it all adds up. If your kids are going to a lot of parties or you are entertaining a lot, it's a good idea to try and have a, a combination of treat foods and healthier options as well. So looking at making food at home can be cheaper as well as healthier and also getting the kids involved in preparing the food is a fun activity for them too and at least you know what's in the food if you're making it at home. So in terms of the kids loot or party bags, so make sure you're including some non-food items in there as well as some treats too. So as we showed you before the sugar content of some popular drinks, so just making sure you have some low kilojoule drink options available both at the kids parties and also at the grown up parties. So we'll be back soon to show you how to make a beetroot dip and a tasty guacamole. We're now going to prepare our beetroot dip and guacamole. So to make these two dips today, you'll need the following equipment. So we've got uh, just a spoon, fork, a nice sharp cutting knife, can opener, cup measure, some serving bowls. Uh, today we're actually going to be using a blender for the beetroot dip, but you don't necessarily need to have something like this. You can just use a knife, uh, a strainer, and a chopping board. That's all we need for these two dips. So Rachel's going to do the beetroot dip first. Um, what are your ingredients, Rach? So the ingredients we need for our beetroot dip is some Greek yogurt, uh, canned beetroot, some garlic, uh, red onion and some lemon juice. So you can actually use fresh lemon or store-bought lemon juice depending on what's available to you. Alright, and I'm going to make the guacamole. So it's just using uh, two avocados, uh, some red onion, probably about a quarter of a red onion, one tomato, a couple of cloves of garlic, we're going to be using some fresh lime juice, with some coriander and you can also add some salt and pepper for seasoning as well. Vanessa and I have already washed our hands before we start preparing the food today but as usual just be careful with any knives or any other sharp equipment you might have especially if there's any kids around. So we're going to be making both dips at once so you'll be saying I'll be doing the guacamole and Rachel will be doing the beetroot and then we'll serve them up at the end for you guys to see. So I'm going to be starting just um, opening up the two avocados and actually mashing them in a bowl. That's always the first step for a guacamole. And I'm just going to start off by uh, draining off the beetroot. So today, um, because we're making the two dips, we're actually just going to use the one lime and use half for the guacamole and half for the beetroot dip. So even though the recipe for the beetroot dip does say um, a lemon, you can actually switch in for a lime if that's what you've got available at home. 
So try and get some nice ripe avocados. These may be a little bit hard, but they'll still be fine. So I'll probably just mash one at a time here. Cool. So have you got any tricks on how to get the pip out of an avocado, Vanessa? Well, I use a knife and just sort of just cut the knife on it and pull it out, but I don't know whether that's the easiest way, but it's the way I've always used. Right. So guacamole is really easy and it's a lot nicer than buying it from the store because you know it's all fresh ingredients. So as I said before, I'm actually going to be using a little uh, blender today with the beetroot, but if you don't have a blender, you can uh, just cut it up really fine using a knife or depending on how soft the beetroot is, you might want to use a, something like a potato masher as well. And also, if you wanted to use fresh beetroot, you could, couldn't you, Rachel, if you just grated it? Yeah. Do the same? Yep. So we just want to um, blend this up. We don't want it to be really, really smooth, um, but just enough that there's not any big chunks of beetroot. Uh, it's nice to have a little bit of texture in there still as well. So I'm just going to push it down the sides just to make sure that it's all nice and even. So the guacamole can be stored in the fridge for probably um, 24 to 36 hours, do you think? The yeah. avocado might start to go a bit brown, so you're better off making it sort of on the day that you're going to use it. The beetroot dip, however, can probably be made in advance and it'll be good in your fridge for, again, a day or two. All right, so I'm just going to pop that into the bowl. So the guacamole is a good one that kids can make as well because it's the mashing of the avocado. You might want to chop the onion and thing, but it's something easy that relatively easy that kids can do. So I'm just going to chop up some garlic. So you probably just need one clove of garlic in your beetroot dip. You can obviously add more in there if you really like the taste of garlic. So depending on how much onion you like for the guacamole, I think the recipe says half an onion, but I only usually do a quarter. Just I don't like too much onion, so I usually make it a bit milder. But if you like lots of onion, put as much in it as you want. But just try and cut it up pretty fine, especially if kids are going to be eating it. So again, um, if you've got a blender or something, you could actually um, cut up your onion in um, a blender if you want it really, really fine so that the kids don't notice it so much. And the red onion or the Spanish onion is a lot milder than a brown or a white onion, so that's where we usually use red onion for dips because it's not cooked as well, so it's more like a salad-y sort of onion. So I'm just popping that garlic in with my beetroot. And grab some of your red onion over here. Again, um, I'd probably only use a quarter of a red onion at the most for this dip. And again, I'm just going to be cutting it really, really fine, as, as fine as I can. So just adding in a fresh tomato as well to this guacamole makes it really fresh and tasty as well. Another uh, really easy dip to make is you can actually do your own homemade tzatziki dip. So basically, it's, it's pretty much the same as this beetroot dip, but instead of um, beetroot, all you need to do is grate up a lemony cucumber and pop that in with your yogurt and your garlic and your juice as well. And that's your own homemade tzatziki, which is a lot cheaper than buying a little tub at the supermarket. So I've chopped up my red onion now and I'm just going to pop that in as well. And then the final ingredient that we need for our beetroot dip is just some Greek yogurt. So. Pretty much any plain yogurt will do the trick, so just depending on what you've got available at your local shop. Oh, these are huge cloves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so once again, depending how much you like garlic, so you can put one or two cloves in, but I'm just doing one for this guacamole. So we just need one cup of yogurt in with our beetroot dip. So 
sometimes if you squash the garlic down in the when it's still in its skin, it's easier to peel off as well. All right, so I'm just popping that in. And now all I have to do is squirt a bit of lime juice in or lemon juice, depending on what you've got, and then give it a good stir. So just squirt a bit in there for taste. And then just mix it all through. This is a great dip um, for kids' parties because, as you can see, it's this really nice bright colour. Just going to put a little bit of fresh coriander in my one. Mm. All right, and that is our beetroot dip. Pretty much done. So today we're just going to um, serve this up with some vegetable sticks and also some homemade pita chips. So I'm just going to cut up a few vegetables to go with this. So I'm just going to stir mine around now. This is the guacamole, so all the ingredients are in here. So the avocado, except the lime, which I'll put in at the end. So we've got the avocado, the red onion, the tomato, uh, the garlic and the coriander, and I'm just going to squeeze in the lime juice. So the lime juice also helps to keep the avocado from going brown as well as giving a good taste. Oh, I can smell that coriander. Yeah, I didn't put too much, but... No, it smells nice. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a quite uh, nice chunky dip as well. It's a really yummy addition to a party as well as any meal. So I'm just going to pop it in a serving bowl. So what we've, as I said before, um, we're going to serve this up with some veggies and some homemade pita chips. So basically with the pita chips, all I did was um, we got some whole grain wraps and just cut them up into whatever shape you like. And then you just pop them in the oven for about five minutes on about 200 degrees. And as you can see, you end up with these nice um, crispy pita chips that are a lot healthier and a lot better for you than potato chips or corn chips. So Rachel's just cut up some carrot sticks and some celery, but you could use any sort of vegetables, uh, capsicum, cherry tomatoes, celery as we've got there. Um, beans, snow peas, sugar snap peas, anything like that. Can I just have some of these? Yep. Little chips. And these um, toasted pita bread are so much healthier than just buying some corn chips. So they're really quick and really easy and really tasty as well. There we go. So this is the guacamole with the veg sticks and the pita chips and Rachel's beetroot dip. So as you can see, they're really quick to make and really healthy choices for parties or any time actually. So that's our guacamole and beetroot dip for adults, but for kids, earlier on we made these nice little fruit jelly cups. So basically um, what I did was you just took, I just juiced the oranges so I, to get up to about 500 mils of juice, but if you can't get enough out of your oranges, you can always top it up with any other kind of fruit juice. Uh, you just bring the juice up to the boil, add a little bit of gelatin, and that's your jelly pretty much done. And then what I've got is some oranges here, and we've just taken all the flesh out of the oranges so that you've just got a case, popped in some fresh strawberries, and then just topped it up with our jellies. So as you can see, um, it's just a nice little jelly cup. So we've used oranges today, but you could pretty much use any fruit that's got a sort of firm skin on it. So you, if you want smaller ones, you probably could actually use something like this little lime here um, because you don't necessarily need to use the juice that came from the fruit. If you want something a little bit sweeter, you can always use some uh, apple juice or pineapple juice, just whatever you've got around. So as you can see, we've got them served here in a couple of ways. You can either serve them in a little cup or you can actually make them look like little orange segments. So mm. Vanessa's just chopping up a few more. So you could use a variety of fruit. You don't have to use fresh fruit. You could use uh, canned fruit as well. So it's up to you, whatever you've got in the house. But it's a good little um, 
healthy, I suppose, dessert for kids that doesn't really require too much preparation either. And it's actually quite a treat, a uh, quick treat that you could make too. And it's the great little dessert that kids can just, you know, grab and, and eat on the run while they're at their party. So once again, it doesn't really have any um, artificial colours and flavours, it's just using all natural products as well. Yeah, so there we so go. There go. So you can just serve those up. Like Vanessa said, if you don't want to use strawberries, you can use canned fruits. You, you can put heaps of different colour on there as well, depending on what kind of fruit you've got. Um, but quick and easy. They take about three to four hours to set in the fridge. So you can make them that morning for an afternoon party. So hopefully today we've given you some good ideas for uh, parties. So with the dips as well as the uh, little fruit treat for kids. And we hope that you've enjoyed the session today. So if you have any queries or suggestions or comments, you can contact Food Bank on 9258 9277 or email us at info at healthyfoodforall.com.au. We also have a website uh, which is on your screen as well. Uh, that will provide you with other recipes and things that we'll upload there for parties too. So if you're wanting to have a look for some other recipes, you're more than welcome to have a look at our website. Our major funders are the Department of Health, Department of Education and the Department of Regional Development, Royalties for Regions, Telethon and BHP Billiton. And Healthy Food for All also has some great supporters. So Harvey Fresh, Perth Mint, Shaw Barge, Mandela's International, the West Coast Eagles and Market City. So if you have any questions or suggestions, uh, you can contact uh, Westlink at westlink at drd.wa.gov.au and we welcome any suggestions that you may have about our programs. So thanks for joining us and we hope you've enjoyed our Food Sensations programs over the last few months and we hope to see you again soon. Bye. See ya.